So this is my fourth trip to Israel since the Hamas terrorist attacks of October 7th. On my last visit here, uh, I discussed the potential for humanitarian pauses to facilitate the release of Hamas's hostages, uh, the surge of humanitarian assistance, the protection of Palestinian civilians. And I said that there were a number of issues that needed to be worked through, but that the United States was committed to achieving these goals. Today, today marks the seventh day of the humanitarian pause in Gaza that the United States worked closely with Israel, Qatar, and Egypt to put in place. The seventh day that hostages have been freed and are returning home to their families. The seventh day that significantly more humanitarian assistance is getting into the people of Gaza who need it. And the seventh day that civilians in Gaza have been able to move to safer areas. I've come again here today to advance a number of goals. Our immediate focus is working with our partners to extend the pause so that we can continue to get more hostages out of Gaza and more assistance in. We share the elation, the relief of the families from more than a dozen countries, including the United States, who've been reunited with their loved ones. And yet, there are scores of family here in Israel, the United States, and around the world whose loved ones continue to be held captive and who are desperate to get them home safely. We will not stop working until we get every hostage back home with their families and loved ones. At the same time, we continue to surge humanitarian assistance to Palestinian civilians in Gaza. Together with the UN, uh, partners in the region, we have significantly increased the flow of food, water, medicine, fuel to power desalination plants, hospitals, and other critical infrastructure. Just over the past week, the mechanisms that we helped to negotiate and implement have more than doubled the number of trucks getting into Gaza. But this is still not enough to meet the needs of its people, which is why we continue to work urgently to get more aid in and to get it in faster. Sustaining and increasing the flow of humanitarian aid, in particular fuel, restocking stores with commercial goods, these are vital to the lives and livelihoods and well-being of men, women, and children. That's especially true for the most vulnerable parts of the population, children, the elderly, pregnant women, people with disabilities, and it's even more pressing as winter sets in, bringing with it a heightened risk of infectious disease outbreaks. The government of Israel agrees with the imperative of humanitarian assistance and the need to sustain it. Prime Minister Netanyahu also made clear that Israel intends to resume its military operations against Hamas when Hamas stops releasing hostages. As we've said from the outset, Israel has the right to do everything it can to ensure that the slaughter Hamas carried out on October 7th can never be repeated. Hamas cannot remain in control of Gaza. It cannot retain the capacity to repeat that carnage.